This is Jocko Podcast number 108 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. Goodbye. You do not get to say goodbye. That is the way it goes. In this line of work, you do not get to say goodbye. One day, your friend is there, your brother, your shared experiences and shared pain and shared thoughts. One day, your friend is there to share those things. And then they're gone. Of course, we think we are all going to live forever. And then, by the bullet, or the bomb, or the ocean, or the sky, They are gone. The memories are there. But they are not enough. They are not enough because the story was not complete. There was more. There was so much more, and now there is not. And there cannot be. And I did not say goodbye. Not once. I did not get to tell you the things I should have told you. I did not say the words. Not even a thank you. But you knew. Because as I knew, you knew. And that is good. And I am thankful. But we did not finish the story. The story was not yet complete. So now, I finish it alone. I'll do my best, but the story will fall short without you in it. But I'll do my best. I will. One last thing. Thank you. And goodbye. And I wrote down those words thinking about a question that I got asked the question was as an operator I know you lost many brothers I lost my wife to cancer my question is how do you deal with the inevitable flashbacks and the toughest moments 
for me, it would be the hospital visits, emergency ambulance rides, or the moment of her passing, which I was at her side for. I struggle a bit as those memories continue to rise to the surface. Thank you for any advice you can offer. And my advice was yes. This does happen. You will have flashbacks of those tough moments. And you will lose control sometimes. And you will break down, and that is the way it is, and that is the way it will be. And as you process the loss, and you adapt to this new reality, the breakdowns will become less frequent. And you'll learn somewhat to control them. But they won't go away completely. Ever. And that's okay. Because they will be a reminder of what you do have. Life. So live it. And that's one of the hardest things for the losses that are suffered in my old profession. There was never any kind of goodbye, at least not a spoken one. Because even though it wasn't spoken, underneath it was there. We lived it. We said goodbye every day in how we lived, in how we trusted, in how we gave. That's the brotherhood. So to all of you out there that have lost one of your comrades in arms, even though you might not have gotten to say goodbye. Even though you may not have told them what they meant to you. Don't worry. They knew. They knew. And you know. And it's going to be okay. So, like I said, that was a uh, question I got. And just wanted to offer some perspective that I unfortunately do have. But speaking of questions, Echo... It's a Q and A day, sure. And I know we got some, a few questions, a few more questions here to go through. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's hit it. All right, we'll do. All right, first question. I'm a young officer, <clears throat> platoon commander. I deployed late. By the time I arrived on deployment, there had been some problems, and my company commander had been set sent back to the states, and the company first sergeant had been redeployed to another country. Now there's a new company commander and new first sergeant. They're treating all the soldiers in my platoon and in in the entire company as if we are all messed up. I don't like their attitude and my gut tells me they're out to make themselves look good by crucifying more people in the platoons. I want to take care of my soldiers. How do I best stand up to the new leadership? Mm. All right. So... I would say the best way that you can take care of your soldiers is not to stand up to the new leadership. 
mm. but instead to build a relationship with the new leadership. Uh, you know, if you confront them, you confront the new leadership that's taken over, automatically they're going to see you as the enemy, right? Yeah. They're going to see whoever got sent home for whatever reason. Maybe there was some kind of a problem. Maybe there was, yeah, there's definitely some kind of a problem. Someone got in trouble. Something happened bad. That's why guys are getting sent out of country or back to the States. If you confront the new leadership, that means you're on the the bad guy's side. That's not where you want to be. Because if you're on the bad side, if you're on the bad list, then they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to trust you. And they're going to be suspect of you and of your soldiers. So, so that is not, confrontation in this is not going to be helpful. What you want to do is, if you can build a relationship with them, if you can try and understand their perspective, which is important, mm. because they don't know, you get, you get put into a position where you're taken over for a quote unquote bad boss, mm. or a bad platoon, or a bad company, you don't know what the specific problems are, so you're pretty suspect on everything, and you kind of have to be. So that's their perspective. Their perspective is like, yeah, we don't know what's going on in here. All we know is something bad happened. They fired the last company commander. Mm-hmm. They fired the last company first sergeant. Something bad happened here. I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to let it happen to me. So mm-hmm. I'm suspect of everything. So, yeah. so, so understand that perspective. Mm-hmm. And then listen to what they're saying. Try and give them some kind of support, right? Try and gain their trust. Mm-hmm. So that way they will listen to you and they will start to believe you and then you will be in a prote- in a position where you can actually protect the soldiers, right? Mm. If you get fired, you're not protecting your soldiers. Mm, yeah. If you go, go oh, I'm gonna stand up for you guys, don't worry about it, you going, hey, you guys, you treat my soldiers bad. Oh, really? You're fired. <laughs> now who's taking care of your soldiers? Yeah. So be careful of that. Now, you could be also be right. And these guys could be really, really bad. They could be out for themselves, out to make themselves look good. And if that is the case, well, it still remains that the best possible thing you can do for your soldiers is to develop a relationship with these guys. Mm -hmm. And make sure that as they're trying to make themselves look good, you protect your soldiers as much as you can. And if they end up being good guys, right, that were just, like I said, just had a coming into a bad situation, well, then you've got an opportunity, then you form a relationship with them, and, and as you get through that, then you, on their good side, you're, you're good to go that way as well. Now, this is where people get a little freaked out, right? Because, because I'm sitting here and I'm saying you gotta play the game, right? People think I'm saying, hey, like, you need to brown nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be fake and be, all this. Yeah. Hey, here's the deal. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about brown nosing. I'm talking about being professional. I'm talking about being respectful. I'm talking about being humble. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding their perspective. I'm not talking about brown nosing. I'm ta- those things, th- that's not how you build relationships. And by the way, you don't build relationships through brown nosing either. Mm. Wait, if you just try and brown nose people, they, they don't respect you. That does, that's not how you build relationships. You don't build relationships through brown nosing. All you do is submit. Mm. You don't build anything. You're just, you're just on the receive side. But if you're respectful and you're humble and you're professional, that's how you build relationships. And the better relationships you have up the chain of command, the better you can take care of the people below you in the chain of command. That's the way it works. Of course, this doesn't mean you're okay if your superiors are doing something that's illegal, immoral, or unethical, or, or if they're putting your troops or the mission in danger, right? They, they, we're, we're not playing the game. We're not playing the game. Now, you might still even then have to play the game. Mm-hmm. If you were my boss, Echo, and you were like, hey, I want you to send your guys to run, attack that bunker on the elevated position right there, enemy bunker with a, with a machine, multiple machine guns in it, with interlocking fields of fire. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we're not doing, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now, if I tell you, I will not do it, and you say, okay, fine, you're fired, you, come here. You take the platoon and go attack, and now that guy does, and they all get killed. Mm-hmm. Maybe what I should have done was like, hey, Echo, we shouldn't do that, that's not a good plan. And you go, no, you do it anyways. I go, hey, that's not a good plan. And you say, go do it or I'm gonna fire you. Okay, I'll go, I'll go do it. And now when you do it, you go out and you flank. You do something different. You know what I mean? You make something happen. You mitigate the damage as much as possible. Mm. So 
you that's a, that's a decision you're gonna have to make. That's why being a leader is hard because yeah. that's a really hard decision to make right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, I remember at the muster last muster, mm-hmm. you're talking about like that that very thing. Like you 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 build a relationship with them, and you know some people every once in a while. I'm paraphrasing kind of what you said, where some people look, will look at it as brown nosing, yeah, and. You're like, no, but it's you build a relationship with them every once in a while. It, you might brush the yeah, words, you, you, you'll brush, you might brush up against some, it. you know, every once in a while, then I'll come back or whatever. Yeah. But, um, but the mission is worth that, you yes. know. If I gotta brush up against brown nosing just for a second to uh, accomplish yeah. the mission or whatever, yeah. then that's what I'm gonna do, kind of thing. And that's what a good leader does. I was like, yeah, man, that, that makes that makes good sense. And really, so when I thought about that, I was like, well, really what that is, is a lack of perspective or people forgetting about the big picture. You right, know, forgetting like, what the big overall thing is. Yes. We're here to win. We're here to win. We're here to win. Yes. And if I got to, if I got to tell this guy, he's got to, you know, that's a great plan, sir. Yeah. That you, you come up with some brilliant plans, sir. I'm going to go and execute that thing. So yeah. that he says, oh, see, Jocko gets it and I'm going to go let yeah. him execute on his own. I'm not going to bother him because he, because he understands my planning. Yeah. And then I go back to my guys and I go, hey, here's what we're doing. A little different from what the boss said, but don't worry. His intention was there. I'm not talking yeah. bad about the boss. But like, hey, this is what the boss wanted to do. I think this is how we're going to get it, get it done. Yeah. Dude, don't talk bad about your boss. Yeah. You just say we're making some adjustments based on his guidance. Yeah. You actually give him credit. Yeah, yeah. That's how you get it done. You yeah. brushing up against brown nosing a little bit. But again, if you're just a full on brown noser, you're not developing relationships. You're just you're just an ass kisser and it's not going to go good for you. Yeah. You cuz yeah. cuz think about this. Think about this. Here's why. And I just thought of this myself. Here's why a brown noser isn't developing a relationship. And here's how it's not good to just be a brown noser. Does the superior listen to the brown noser? Does he respect their opinion? Mm-hmm. No, not really. Yeah. He's just looking at him like, "Oh yeah, he's just Oh yeah, that's yeah. old old Echo. Yep. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can do whatever. So you nice little yes man. Cool. Yeah. You give me input. I'm like, oh, thanks, Echo. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, hey, the big boys yeah. are over here trying to talk. Can you can you yeah. just excuse yourself? You know, yeah, you don't want to end up like that. You're kind of the guy who like, you know, like the the, the iconic picture of the guy fanning the other guy. And yeah, yeah. Him grapes. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. that guy. Cool to yeah. have around. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. Keep, but he's not giving any strategic nah, input on the operations. Not building yeah, the sure. relationship. So. Yeah, build a relationship, man. Don't confront. Build. Yeah, I Next. think we're distracted by that, right? The, the the feeling you get when this new guy comes. He did. I don't like the way he said yeah. that to me, even though what he said was really important. I don't like the way he said it. You know what's interesting is when a lot of leadership books that we've discussed and a lot of leadership guidance will say if you're a new leader coming in, you just don't start barking orders, right? You yeah. just don't start saying, hey, do this, we're changing that. Mm-hmm. You assess and you look around and you make sure. Now, occasionally this doesn't happen. This, there's things that happen if you're taking over a totally messed up unit yeah. or team, then you might have to go in there and, and lay down some law. But generally, you come in and you assess and you make, you, then you see what's wrong and you see where some adjustments could be made. Yeah. Now think about that from the other side, from down the chain of command, you also shouldn't jump to conclusions yeah. and be like, oh, the new boss is an idiot or the new boss has this plan. Yeah. No, you should be like, okay, let's see what his plan is. Yeah, You should both have a little period of like a, like a, like a cooling down period, sure. but a warming up period. <laughs> sure, yeah. The yeah. opposite of a cooling down, it's a warming yeah. up, it's getting to know each other. Yeah. This is way out of left field, but so a big, big shocker. <laughs> so Greg McIntyre, he'd he 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 made this one comment where he was explaining like how he rolled with like some some famous mm-hmm. person, and um, like he rolled. I was like, oh yeah, like how was that? You know, you know how you want the full report? Like how was it really? I forget who it was, but he was like, he was like, no, nah, it was a full on you know first date role. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I had never heard that before. But oh, I knew exactly yeah, what yeah, that you know meant. What it, is, yeah. it was like I'm not gonna go hard in the paint no, right no, off the no, bat. No. He, I can feel he's not yeah, yeah. going hard, and it's just kind of a feeling out, you know, and a lot of respect throughout the whole what thing. What level does that start at in jujitsu? What do you mean? Like what? What? How good do you have to be in jujitsu before you start like having a little nice, gentle? First date for, for, I, I, you know what I call is it? just respectful. Yeah. Like, yeah. like here's an example. You just don't dive on the ankle lock. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. two seconds into rolling, yeah. like oh really? Sprawling okay. Hard and, I yeah. mean, I've had that happen. 
And, oh, then, yeah. and then I've had to, you know, take appropriate, we'll call them <laughs> measures. <laughs> right. And you see, and you know that, and that's the whole reason for the first date role, really. Well, yeah. Because it's, it's like, like cool. you know, you start to roll the guy, you've heard of him, and yeah, he's yeah. heard of you, and or whatever, whatever the situation yeah. is. And you guys roll, and in your mind, you're kind of like, okay, hey, I'm going to yeah. give this guy some respect. And he doesn't. He goes all out. First thing, it's kind of like, you kind of got, you got offended a little bit. Not majorly, but there's that little inkling of, oh, all right. Yeah. It's something. Yeah. It's not nothing. It's something, but compared to just some dude, you know. Let's say we're all training some sh- dude, some new person, whatever, in the gym, and you guys are all going hard. It's all good. You're going hard. That's I know how. this. Like, like basically, purple belts, yeah. they're coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Brown belts and black belts, you know, it's all cool. Yeah. You know, it's like mutual respect, and we'll roll. And I'm not saying we, yeah. and I'm not saying don't roll hard, and I'm not saying you don't escalate because as you get to going, yeah. you know, yeah. like things that's escalate, all, and yeah. oh, that's you know, you get to know each other. Now it's okay to. To get after it a little bit, yeah. Uh, that's weird. That's a weird little unwritten thing in, yeah. in jujitsu, isn't it? Like what, I don't really. I guess it's just respect. Yeah, I think just it respect. Is. So yeah, Feels do that like up and it. down the chain of command too. Yeah, like a little that, respect. It's that first hey, date, like period. You like know, how you yeah. said that period. Let's get to know it. A little warming up period. Warming up, warming up period. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Give your bosses that slack. Yeah, fully. All respect. All nice. You know. Next question, Jocko. I got a question regarding the quote. If there is a doubt, there's no doubt. Oh, right. I remember that yeah, from yeah, yeah. the last time. Okay. This would seem to indicate avoiding taking risks. Many, many businesses or many business decisions involve risk. Often there can be a doubt about either of two options. Doubt that you should maintain the status quo and doubt about pursuing a new opportunity. To frequent or you frequently talk about dichotomies. Would you mind sharing your thoughts on this principle? Yeah, okay. this is this is a classic thing and and it's a great point and that's why these little sound bites can be a little bit dangerous sometimes where you yeah, get these yeah. little little power sound bites because they are that simple and of course I love I like things to be simple right that's the number two law of combat is to keep things simple sure. but sometimes th- things like this need a little bit of amplifying information and yes this could be construed as being extremely risk averse and like hey if I have any doubt about the safety or the success of this mission that we're not gonna do it yeah. which if that was the case, then I would have done zero missions during my deployments to Iraq. Uh, same with business. Never would have started Victory MMA. Never would have started Echelon Front because there was risk involved in starting those things. Never would have done anything, really, mm. because there's always going to be doubt. So this is an accurate statement. And, of course, every business has risk. And so, so I guess that idea that if there is a doubt, there is no doubt is not to be taken literally when it comes to risk. Mm. When it comes to risk, don't take it literally. But it, what it should be, I think, is like a, a warning, right? Mm. Like a little warning that's in your head. If there's a doubt, like, okay, we need to think about what's going on here. We need to understand what what is at risk here. Mm. Because, and I just had this conversation with the CEO of a company. As a matter of fact, I was talking about the dichotomy of leadership, and I was talking about how, you know giving him examples. I was like, for instance, mm-hmm. in and he was in a technology company, and I said, you know, if you didn't take risk, you wouldn't you wouldn't make any progress. But if you took too much risk, you wouldn't be where you are right now because mm-hmm. they're dominating. So it's like, oh, you're you're balancing that dichotomy all the time. So if he would have said, hey, if there's a doubt, there is no doubt, he never would have gotten off the ground. Now. Where I think it becomes a more solid statement is from like a moral or an ethical Mm. standpoint. And that is if you think that something is wrong, well, then it probably is. If you think you're doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing, then there's doubt and you probably shouldn't be doing it. I think an easy way to keep yourself in check, and these days it's a very real possibility, is just if you think that you're being recorded at all times. Mm. Like if you just think, oh, I'm being recorded, which probably yeah. somebody is recording you. Yeah. Like if you decide you think you can get away with something, you're probably not going to get away with it. Look yeah. at all the, just go watch YouTube, <laughs> you know, <laughs> caught in the act or whatever. Yeah, People get yeah. caught all the time. So whatever you're doing, think that there could be somebody there with a phone recording you. And I think that's keeps you morally and ethically in check. You know, I used to tell my guys that you could be getting watched by CNN or Al Jazeera or some report, you know, whoever you you know, you could be getting watched, and if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, you're you're gonna get caught. Yeah. So don't do it. Not to mention these days we got the aircraft overhead; they can see everything. So do the right thing. Mm. That's what you do. You do the right thing. Yeah. 
If you have any doubt that what you're doing is the right thing, then you should probably shouldn't do it. A lot of those, a lot of the horrible police actions, yeah, are you know re- recorded by some random person with a yeah. phone. Now, of course, I I always need to point out that there's all these good actions that take place every single day. Millions and millions of police doing the right thing. Yeah, no one publishes those. No one uploads yeah. those onto YouTube or Facebook. But the bad acts that are caught, they're caught because someone has a camera. Yeah, and so like that's great advice for a cop. Hey, act like you're being recorded all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. That's interesting. Well, it make it because you very well might be. Yeah, yeah. So do the right thing. Do the right thing. Next question. Thank God I didn't have cameras when I was a kid. <laughs> for all the dumb stuff I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I always want to make sure that I'm not sitting here saying like, I, everyone out there should do the right thing like me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not first saying thing, that. First if thing, you yeah. thought I was saying that, I'm <laughs> not saying that. And I apologize for even sounding that way. <laughs> like. I was as yeah. dumb and stupid as the next person and still do dumb stuff. Try not to. Yeah. Oh, good, bro. You're the man. You don't do dumb stuff, right? No, man. it was bad when when uh, when we had Charlie Plum and Jim Kunkel on. Yeah. And I'm like thinking, they're like, you know, hey, this is the way to act right. And I'm like, hey, don't put me in that category <laughs> with you guys. You guys are awesome, like yeah. heroes. And I'm just over here. Like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That's yeah. Good. Don't say that about me. You guys can say like, hey, talk about character. Uh-huh. You have character. I'm just over here trying to yeah, do my yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Check. Next question. Should McMap, that's what we're calling it, McMap? Yeah, McMap. That's McMap. the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. Should McMap belts carry over in some way to jujitsu belts or should everyone start out as a white belt no matter what kind of training you've had before? Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. White belt. White belt. Yeah. White belt. Uh, for those of you who don't know what McMap is, McMap is the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. It's a good program. Yeah. It's solid. It's a solid, good place to start. The Marine Corps put together a good program. The Army has a really good program too. The Army Combatives Program. Yeah, great stuff. And both those are solid. But specifically, the Marine Corps makes well, the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program has belts. You get like a tan belt. And then I think a green belt, and then a brown belt, and then a black belt. Pretty legit, right? They have a little program. Um, there is no equivalency to jujitsu. Like you, you'll know some stuff, but it's you should just when you go to start jujitsu, you just go with a white belt on. Now it's the same thing with judo. Judo is really close to jujitsu, as we know. Judo is really close to jujitsu. If you have a black belt in judo, cool. White belt in jujitsu. Uh, sambo, very. You know, again, very similar to jujitsu, white belt. So you might you're going to get promoted faster, yeah, because you have a lot of experience. Wrestling is the same thing. Like you just don't go, oh, I'm I'm, a, I'm just going to show up as a purple belt because I've been grappling for eight years. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Show up with a white belt, be humble, no big deal. You'll advance fast. Don't care about the belts, man. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. Doesn't matter. Yeah, just go in there and train. As a matter of fact, having a white belt is kind of nice because there's no pressure whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Like just. Enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy not worrying about getting tapped out. Enjoy just being able to roll and roll with people that are better than you or worse than you. You're the lowest on the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. You can roll with anybody and tap out, and that's it. It's cool. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, agree. Yeah, I mean, that it seems kind of self explanatory, maybe a little bit, because, you know, it's like anything. You t- it's like any accolade, because that's really what the belt is, essentially. It's like an accolade, right, that you can wear. I think that belt actually is a sign of where you are on the on the hierarchy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And and it's a sign though. Yeah. It's not written in stone. It's right. it's just a sign because we know little, that there's an indicator. Yeah, it's an indicator, yeah. right? Cuz yeah. we know that there's 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 purple yeah. belts that can tap out black belts and there's yeah, sure. and it's just an indicator. But what about like the, the purpose though, you know? It's like a it's like a little thing, like a badge. Okay, kinda, yeah, okay, right? yeah. I'm trying to figure if I can counter that, but I don't think, yeah, it's, it's like a badge. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out for sure, like what it is. I like yeah. belts, by the way. I, I like it, I dig the mm-hmm. whole thing. Um, but yeah, if you get kind of that badge in, in something specific, it's always something specific, like even like real badges, you know, this is specific. Yeah. So yeah, when you come and do something else, it's like, yeah, you got to get that specific badge. Yeah, true. In, you know, um, Studio 540. Right, Rob yeah. steps up there. They have judo and jujitsu. They have judo in yeah. there. 
So, you know, if you're Guys taking the like, jujitsu class, you know, at noon and then you go to the judo class at two, yeah, you're changing your belts yeah, if you're different. Goes, you know, yeah. you can't just, oh, I'm just going to keep on my gi and just teach me judo. I'm not, I know. And no, bro, you change your belts. That's how, you know, that's yeah. a different thing. And like you said, they're so, similar. So you're right. It's vice versa, too. Get yeah. your black belt in, in jujitsu, go to a judo class, yeah. white belt. Yeah. Straight up. You're not. Where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, this question he said, should it, tra- should it translate? Um, carry over in some way yeah it does carry over in some way right you have some level the of skill, skill. Yeah, yeah the skill does not the belt though yeah. yeah you have some level of skill now if you're a black belt in mcmap if all you took was mcmap you will not be able to you will you will get you will not have a good time you will not do well against a, a jujitsu black belt oh, yeah, most yeah. jujitsu black belts yeah you're not going to do well yeah, and that's and that's just kind of speaks more for because I think like you yeah, yeah. well it's just so much just, just time on time of training yeah it's time of training if you've been training longer you're gonna win yeah that's the general rule yeah yeah you know of course there's athleticism and there's strength and there's blah blah blah, blah. but if you've been training jujitsu longer you're gonna win yeah pretty much yeah makes sense next question I run a five man team two men down. What does that mean? Two he's men. he's missing two guys. Oh, so okay. So five man team. So what? It's supposed to be seven. Now it's five, or it's it's a five man team. Now there's only three. We don't know. We don't know. Well, okay. Either we'll way, we say. we figure that he's undermanned. Sure. We know that much. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. Undermanned team. Five man team. Two men down. I'm not meeting performance expectations. No support coming from my command. Do you see a way out other than just getting after it? I know you also talk about blaming yourself in taking extreme ownership because the people above you may have different information that leads to prioritize different areas however when i question things like why we don't have enough people working in different zones when clearly there's an imbalance in zones to the point customers notice or it makes it difficult for colleagues to do their jobs then i'm deemed argumentative and that i don't have the best intentions this was this was with the manager that is in charge of in charge of business and I would think understands my perspective more. We're supposed to have a culture of feedback, but he isn't receptive. I'm not the only one who said that about him as well. This all leads to me, to me, this all leads me to think that I must just be fake and go through the motions, but that disgusts me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what do we do here? How do we take ownership of this? How do you take ownership of your boss not listening to you, not hearing what you're saying? Well, the way you take ownership of that isn't to say my boss doesn't listen and doesn't understand. The way to take ownership of that is to say that I'm not a, I'm not doing a good job of getting my uh, information to my boss. I'm not doing a good job of convincing my boss. I'm not doing a good job of influencing my boss. Boss. So you can either be mad about that or you can change your approach. Uh, step one, we're going back to this again today, um, build a relationship with that person. Mm. Now there's a chance that that disgusts you. <laughs> there is, right? Sure. I've yeah. talked about that before. I've literally said that I had great relationships with people that I had like a visceral hatred for. I sure. still had a good relationship with them and worked very well with them. Okay. If it disgusts you and you can't do that, then there's other jobs, right? Where you don't have to interact with other people. You know, you could be like a long haul truck driver. Mm. You can be a technical writer, you know, where you just look at the information and turn it into words. You can be a lab technician. We don't have to interact with a lot of different people, and that's cool. Mm. Um, there's a lot of jobs out there that require very little human interaction. That's fine. Because if you think you're gonna go through life only working with people that you get along with, you're wrong. That's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Especially if you wanna run teams and you wanna lead and you have to learn how to get over the fact that you might have to work with people that you don't like. Mm-hmm. And by the way, on top of that, if they know that you don't like them, that is not gonna make your job easier and it's not gonna make your life better. In fact, it's gonna make your life more miserable. The people that I had visceral hatred for that that I worked for, mm. it wasn't that bad because at least they thought I liked them and and yeah. I acted like it and they liked me. So it's like, okay, it was a little painful, but you know what? Yeah. It's pretty low impact yeah. as opposed to like head-to-head conflict yeah, every yeah. single day. And by the way, when you have head-to-head conflict every day, you're miserable, you're gonna advance slower, you're gonna have less control over your fate, you're not gonna get 
promoted. And on top of all that, you're going to get assigned the crappiest possible jobs because your boss doesn't like you. And he likes that other guy over there. So he's going to get the easy job. Yep. Right? He's yep. going to get, go. you go save the princess. Jocko, go slay the dragon, right? <laughs> now, of course, we know I prefer to slay the dragon. Never mind the princess. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you want to get along with this person. You want to play the long game. You want to play the long game. And here's the deal. When you play the long game, if the person sucks as bad as you say they do, they'll end up making their own bed and having to lie in it. And they'll end up working for you. Now, uh, also, make sure that you come to the table with solutions, not just complaints and problems. Right? You can see that this guy's talking about, we don't have enough guys and you need to square these zones. Well, what's your solution to the problems? Yeah, yeah. And what's really smart to do, and you got to be a little bit careful with this, but what can be very smart to do is okay, if you can solve the problem with your own internal assets, mm-hmm. just go and execute on it and solve it. You know, if you use your own internal assets to solve a problem, make the, make the change, make it happen, implement it, and you go to the boss and say, hey, this is what we did. There was this problem on our zones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we made this adjustment. I took two guys from this blah blah blah. I moved them around, and now here's where we're at. We're getting better, you know, results. You you have to be careful because you can say that in such a way that you're throwing in your boss's face, right? Yeah, you can yeah. absolutely do that. Now, even though you were trying to build a relationship and trying to help the mission, you still end up with an adversarial relationship with your boss. And now things go negative again. So you got to be careful when you do this. You can also just present the idea and present the solution. Be like, hey, boss, here's what I want to do. Which is, that's once you've got the relationship trust built up. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't there, then you can't just go present a bra, present a solution of how you're going to do it. He's not going to let you do it because he doesn't trust you. Because yeah, yeah. he's got an adversarial relationship with you. Yeah. You see where this is? Yeah. You see how this works? Yeah. Uh, another thing he says in here. He, he says, uh, he says, uh, I would think the manager, this was a manager that is in charge of the business and I would think he understands my perspective more. Right? So here we go. If you want to take ownership of things and how you and you look at your boss and say he doesn't blame my perspective or doesn't understand my perspective, that's his fault. Mm-hmm. You know the way I look at that? If you don't understand my perspective as my boss, it's my fault. Mm-hmm. That means I'm not explaining it to you. It means I'm not giving you enough information. Mm-hmm. It means I'm not convincing you. It means I'm not building a relationship so that you can see my perspective. That's what that is. So don't blame the boss. Step up your game, build the relationship, teach him the perspective, and win. And I'll tell you one more little thing on this. From a to get away from the disgust mindset, because mm-hmm. I understand that. Yeah. You know, the one one good way to get away from the disgust mindset is to get into the game mindset. The game, like this is a game. Mm. And this guy that I don't like, I'm going to become best friends with him. Watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, okay. Oh, you don't like this guy? Cool. Watch. Mm. Yeah. Watch this. That's how it's going to go. And you're going to have fun with it. And you're going to try and win the game. Yeah. Which is good. Sure. Winning. That understanding perspective, um, I think that's an everyday, almost everyday kind of thing where, okay, so my wife, we're on our way to the park. This is today, by the way. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, it, she said, it's a, there's two parks. There's one you can go straight. There's one you can make a right. Then you make another left. It's, it's two parks. And I don't know which one we're going to. I don't really mind which one we go to. Uh, so she's like, yeah, let's let's go to the other one. Right. And she mentions that I don't know which even one is the other one. But whatever, I'll follow your direction. So she said, okay, make her. She said, she goes, stay in this lane. She doesn't motion, though. She goes, stay in this lane. So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to stay in this lane. And she goes, okay. Uh, turn here but then so she's not like pointing like turn here it's mm-hmm. like because there's a turn right here and then there's one like right here you know turn here can apply to like a bunch of stuff but in her mind it's super clear you know so if i would have got mad or actually i can see how people can get frustrated yeah. right there right so if i would express myself hey, you're not being more clear boom now we're we're against each other relationship yeah, because i didn't in my mind, I'm like, I can't read your mind. Yeah. Explain better. It's funny. Leif's you know? got a funny story. He was they were on night visions in a Humvee, and yeah. he's telling the driver he's in the vehicle commander seat, which is the basically the pa- the front passenger seat, yeah. and he's he's pointing, he's going, hey, turn here, 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 yeah, yeah, and and the guy just like keeps driving, 
And he goes, bro, what are you doing? And the guy's like, I can't see you. Because when you have night vision goggles on, you have no peripheral vision. He's like, I can't see your fingers. And Leif's like, oh, sorry. Because <laughs> what the proper call is right turn 30 meters or right, right turn 500 meters. Right turn 100 meters. Right turn coming up, right turn. Boom. And that way the person can do it. Yeah. But Leif was pointing, but the guy couldn't see it. Yeah. But there's this. Um, Very similar this... to your wife who's not pointing. Yeah, she wasn't pointing at the time. Well, here's the thing, too. And this is jamming me up. I, I'm not going to take too long on this one. But the way girls. Well, take your time. We're all the here. Girl, the way girls, female, females, girls take. Do you remember the last time you talked about you generalized females? Go ahead. At your peril. No, go ahead. No, it wasn't at my peril because that, that was the same thing. What? It was the drawing the a bike bicycle. thing. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. right. So yeah. It's the same thing. Same deal. <laughs> No one drew a bike. No one drew a bike. It's no, completely cor- correct. No, nope. someone drew you on a tricycle. On an animated tricycle. And that was legit. And it was very you legitimate. Give credit. Separate than the point, but it was yeah. good. There it was, was also some there was also some pretty uh non working bicycles that were drawn. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I dig it. And this by no means says, you know, the superiority or inferiority of any of the of the sex at all. I'm just saying there was okay. a study done. Girls and guys interpret and give directions in completely different ways because of how they how their brain formulates like um like uh, directions okay. so girls kind of require this is real generally speaking girls require like landmarks we'll bring jordan b peterson back on to talk about this <laughs> okay i want to i'd ask to see if to you're see correct or not yeah. so girls they they prefer like landmarks and you know you know like the the, the, the voice on the thing like she'll be yeah, like yeah, yeah. Oh, on this one so they can you wait know, you mean the siri voice siri voice yeah whatever or whatever yeah i mean those Google can help voice. guys too or whatever that that, that navigation voice wasn't part of this study so i shouldn't okay. even mention the voice but they they prefer like landmarks like make a you right at the in a, building in a jet yeah. When, when you're flying a jet plane, sure, like an yeah. F-18, yeah. which yeah. which I have done a backseat ride in an F-18 before, sure. but the voice that talks to you is a is a female voice, and the, and I was told that it's because it relaxes, it gets the attention of, and then kind of relaxes the pilots. So it says like like when I was flying, mm-hmm. and I don't know, I, I I wasn't like we were gonna die, but. Um, at all like I'm not trying to say sure. that at all, but yeah. the, the thing would cool. say warning It was a girl's voice and say warning warning yeah. altitude altitude. Yeah, and yeah, so they say it's relaxing a little bit Yeah, I could dig it Um, you know typically if my wife is giving me directions, it's not relaxing <laughs> I'm not saying it's stressful, <laughs> but it's not relaxing So where were you going with this the girls which you said was gonna be I'm short. just saying it's it's dangerous <laughs> to do the directions thing the navigation thing with your wife or your girlfriend or with a girl with a girl then like if you let's say you and a girl in whatever capacity is sitting next to you and you guys are you know how like when we're looking for the hotel yeah. we were both sort of looking for the hotel yeah. you know and we're both kind of navigating and then i failed then you just jump you know remember right, that right. Okay. and you actually debrief me yeah. you're like hey when it was time when i failed at nav you were just like i got this yeah. here right turn coming up 500 meters right turn 200 <laughs> meters yeah Right turn 100 meters, right yeah. turn, right turn, right turn. Okay, get in the right-hand lane. And you were just right like, turn. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, Makes it easy. So consider that type of situation before you took over. Consider that situation when you, we were both trying to navigate. Mm-hmm. If you do that with a girl, you you are more likely to run into problems because of this. They interpret, I don't even know what this is anymore. They <laughs> interpret and give directions in different ways because their brain works different. They right. require like landmarks got kind of guide them like, okay, Ooh. make a right at this, make a left at this. Okay. That helps, sure, but it's more. What with, do guys go off of? They build a map in their head. So if they're like, okay, they, like if they looked at a map, they'd be like, okay, they'd have a better understanding. Okay, so sure, I can make a right at the, at the building or whatever. Mm. But when they make a right, they're like, okay, I made that right. So here I am physically oriented, you mm. know, and they kind of uh, make sense of that. Way more than the girls do. I'm not saying it's like one is black, one is white. I'm just saying one does There's more of one, one does more of the tendency. other. tendency. Yeah, it's more than ten- tendency because it's how your mind works. Okay. This is just the stuff. I didn't do the study. I, I Anyone that wants it. to address this with Echo yeah. on yeah. social media can yeah. t- address it to Echo. Okay. I'm, I'm out on this I will one. say this, <laughs> and, and I'll believe the study. I sure will because I haven't been The other one is if you, haven't, if you didn't listen to all the podcasts, Echo also said that girls cannot draw offhand a functional bicycle. Bicycle, correct. And he got a lot. He got a lot of attempts. Yeah. And he did get one person that put a GIF 
it's a gif, right? Animated gif. An animated yeah. gif of Echo himself riding a tricycle. A tricycle, yeah. It, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, beside the point, but it was very, very awesome. Yes. I don't even have any idea what the point of anything that we've said in the last few minutes, and I don't even want you to try and explain. We're talking it. about miscommunication. Like, I can't read your mind. You got to communicate, you know, like, he right. don't understand my perspective. He's supposed to understand kind of thing, you know? Got you it. run into yes. that. Yes. True. It's true, man. So you got to be clear is what I'm saying. Like how you were when we were finding that steak place or the mm, hotel or whatever. Yes, we were. We were that was for. a good steak, by the way. Yes. All right. Next question. Do you think we, do you think you would take up jujitsu in your 40s? If you had been introduced to something else in your 20s, like Muay Thai, boxing, etc. I'm struggling with jujitsu. I respect the hell out, out of it. I have an easier time with boxing and kickboxing. <laughs> just interesting. What? I'm just making a little note. Like, oh, gotcha. I have an easier time with these things. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Maybe. Mm, interesting. Given your most recent admission that you're, you are boring, obviously you're not because of your popularity. Do you think you'd pick it up later in life? Jiu-jitsu to me is a chore. Boxing, kickboxing is fun. I think because in my youth, I figured out how to move my body in that way. I'm 43, by the way. Uh, so, first of all, do I think I would go to jiu-jitsu or start jiu-jitsu or get into jiu-jitsu in my 40s if I had not If I had been... Yes, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Uh, the power of jiu-jitsu is very real. It's a real thing. And once I recognized it, I wanted to have that power. The, mm. the power to choke people, arm lock them, dominate, win, like win with no mercy. Now, what what's interesting about this is there's certain people like certain things, right? Mm. And he even says like, I have an easier time with kickboxing and boxing because he's, he's, part of that's because he's done it mm. for a long time since yeah. his 20s, so yeah. it's just easy for him. And it, it like jujitsu seems like a chore for him because you know what else he's getting beat up you know if he doesn't just get into it now he's getting beat up he's getting yeah that's yeah. a chore man it's yeah. hard it's hard on the ego yeah um yeah i thought of an interesting rule if you don't like jujitsu if you don't think you like maybe you, what do you think of this rule if you don't think you like jujitsu take it and i was trying to think take it for six months take it for three months and i said take it until you legitimately submit someone that is comparable in some way to you yeah you think that's a good rule i think that's yes. a good rule yeah I think that's a good, good rule. rule yeah because i'm not talking about you you tap someone out that's weak and small or right. weaker than you and smaller than you and then you're like see i can tap them out i'm gonna quit now no yeah. i'm talking about someone that's equivalent to yeah. you someone that has some comparable like physical yeah. attributes yeah. to yeah. you because I believe that once somebody gets the taste of the power, yeah, the power. and also yeah. this this also implies, or is factually, if if you train enough that you submit someone, that means you got submitted a, a thousand, probably five hundred times. Yeah, you think that's a good number? Five, I bet you, if you by the time you submit someone in jujitsu, you've probably been submitted five hundred times. Yeah. Okay, yeah. four hundred, times. three hundred times, three hundred times. Yeah, D yeah. I if mean, you go to a jujitsu academy. Yeah. As a white belt, zero training. Yeah, yeah. You're sure. gonna get submitted four times, five times, six times a class, mm -hmm. right? Well, it just depends if there's other white belts that that are first, second, uh, third, true. fourth, fifth day, first first month. So y y you could. No, yeah, you could. Depends. depends I bet how you big. get submitted a, a oh, lot yeah. of times. Oh yeah, you're not it's, tapping guys it's, out. It's three hundred sure. times. It's two hundred times. Yeah. It's definitely more than a hundred. But I wouldn't say before you get tapped you out a tap hundred times in a week. Wait, before did wait wait was did you say times before, before you, you tap, tap anybody. out anybody? Yes. Yeah, that that's going to depend. If you have other white belts in first day, guys, let's say you've yeah, um, of course, you know, if you've been training for three weeks, you can tap out somebody that hasn't been training ever. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how fast you can learn jujitsu. Yeah, when I the first moves that I learned, I didn't. I probably knew like a month's worth of jujitsu, but no one could hang with me because I knew like the basic stuff. No one even knew what to do. Yeah, yeah. Consider a rear naked choke. All you have to do is you can learn the rear naked choke one day in the beginning of class, and all you have to figure out when you roll. If a guy doesn't have much experience, all you have to figure out is how to get on his back. That's all you got to do. It's really cool when you teach kids jujitsu. Like you can say something like, you could give them the class on how to pass the guard, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 
and they would start to do what you told them to do or you could say okay your goal is to get out of their yeah. legs and get around yeah. them yeah. and they'll figure out how to do it yeah and it's pretty awesome yeah and then yeah. what you do is you give them a couple little pointers yeah because their instincts will be a little bit off but you give them a couple little pointers a couple of things to work with and then they'll develop those into some really cool stuff yeah it's in I don't know if I said this before, but that even is true. Not as much, but is still true with adults. Yeah. It's because if you teach them the technique first and then, then you say, Hey, th- those techniques that I taught you, that's passing the guard. And it doesn't, it's way easier to like get, it's almost like getting a big piece of clay yeah. and being like, okay, make the head, make the body, make the arms. That's it. And then be like, okay, now you got the arms. That's cool. Now I'll make the fingers. Now I'll make the, you know, and then start to go with the details there as far as the, the technical techniques with like passing the guard yeah. but i that's how actually that's how i learned from dean where he would teach stuff but i would just see him like getting past and i know okay <laughs> when he gets past you that's like hard to get out of so that's what i want to try to do and when guys would get that past, is affirmative I, yeah so it, it i thought i thought that it really worked better that way to just to teach that way if someone's starting from zero because yeah. it's hard to put into context when you don't know anything you're like yeah i'm doing this cool like it's pretty technique, cool it's but... cool doing the intro class at the muster because yeah. you have a lot of people that have never done jujitsu yeah, before yeah yeah and we that's that like how and how you're saying to teach is exactly how we teach it. Yeah. It's like, hey, this is the concept. And then we teach a couple little moves of like what to do there. And then you watch people get after it. And they do get after yeah. it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But yes, here, the, the reason for this, and this goes for anything, by the way. If you are successful, especially if they're all, if they're kind of similar, like in this case where he's like, okay, martial arts, right? Jiu-jitsu. I'm going to start jujitsu way late. Meanwhile, I have experience doing Muay Thai and boxing. So if he has experience, assuming he's been somewhat successful, not necessarily in competition, but yeah. not not competition, just like he knows what he's doing. When he throws a punch, he can have a level of success of that punch landing, you know, like, and it's going to be pretty often if he has 20 years experience, give or take, whatever. So he's experiencing little, how should I say, little micro successes when he jumps in the boxing situation. On Muay Thai. <laughs> and Jiu-Jitsu is getting macro oh, failures. Macro <laughs> failures all day, all day. It's a huge chore and yeah. that's life. So if you look, if you're, if you're going in with nothing, you have no micro, uh, you know, successes, no nothing. You're just going in. I don't train anything. I go in. Sure. I'll take some hits. I'll take some failures because I'm learning this new thing. But if you have it compared to look, I'm going to come into victory MMA. I'm going to see the kickboxing situation going on. I'm going to see jujitsu situation going on. My brain is automatically going to be like, okay, what's going to be the best experience for me right now? Micro victories. I'm going to go where the victories are. I'm going to go where the payoff is. You know, those payoffs where I can land punches. I can do I can know what I'm doing. Dang. When I move my body, it does what I want it to do. And it yields success. Yeah, Yeah, it's effective. Or I can go to jujitsu. And where everyone else has success, everyone else is getting their payoff. Not me, by the way. Everyone else is. I'm getting tapped out. And that part in and of itself is like, that's a, especially if you're a guy. It's is a it a personality thing where some people, as soon as they get, as soon as they get tapped into jujitsu, they're like, oh my God, I need to learn this immediately. Like, it's just, personal, yeah. you know, when you, you know, when people get the jujitsu bug. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That, that, would, not everyone so. gets the jujitsu bug, yeah. right? Yeah. Not everyone. Agreed. A lot of people do. Yeah. Well. What percentage of people get the jujitsu bug? Oh dang, I have no 20%? idea. 20%? 30%? Uh, depends. Like 20% of who? Of all people, uh, of people. who start doing jujitsu? Yeah. It's probably not even 20%. Yeah. Now that I think about it. It's, like, it's weird as much as there's, there is jujitsu, as much as we talk about it in a very positive way, people, normal people, have a hard time with it. It's yeah. weird for me to admit that. It's yeah. weird for me to say that. Be, but if I think about it, and I've talked about this before, like of all the people that I've introduced to jujitsu over the years, mm-hmm. I would I think I have like maybe four black belts of people that I fully like they they started jujitsu because of me. I'm talking mm-hmm. so that with those percentages, it's very, very small of people that actually stick with it and get the bug. Yeah. Might not even be four. And but you and you can get the bug and the bug kind of wear off. You know how that is? Where mm. you know I, I remember then that's not the bug. That's not the real bug. That's, not the real that's bug. like the the, the, the that, diet yeah. Jesus bug the, or something. The bug light. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah, well it's the bug light that's because exactly. people get purple belt and then they don't show up anymore. People exactly. get the brown belt, they don't show up. People don't get the yeah. blue belt and they don't show up anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It just they just the And whole, then there's people who get the black belt, off. keep training. Yeah. 
So that's the bug. The, that's yeah. the real bug. Yeah, fully. I used to think like when you dream about it, you know how like you'll dream, you'll learn yeah, a move yeah. and you'll dream. Of, yeah. It'll just kind of be in your thing, um, in your mind, you know, it's conscious and the subconscious. I thought that that was kind of it. But in my experience, that, that goes away sometimes. It depends on what you're into. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah. But nonetheless, he. that's it. That's what I think. Cause that's pretty common. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like for guys, sure, they're for sure. in the, so was there, was there like an actual advice? Yeah. Like, do you uh, think, do you think you, it, yeah, I would have that. So my answers are, yes, I would have done jujitsu cause I would have had the bug. And my advice is if it's a chore, keep doing it until it's fun. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> I, that, the thing is, it is fun to get beat. It's fun to get like, it's fun. It's, it's fun to have so, like my favorite people to train with are the people that give me the hardest runs. Yeah. I know, and my absolute most favorite people to train with are the people that actually can get me. You know, but it's again, when you have to have this, the, there's this third factor here where the kickboxing and boxing is right there. Yeah. I could be right there right now winning. and, and winning. winning, you know, just doing it. And but I'm not. I'm over here, and this guy's mounted on me, and and he's yeah. he's choking me and stuff. Like, it's man, it's I dig it, man. It makes so. Sense. I guess we could reverse this question and say like, okay, Jocko, then when why why aren't you in boxing and striking all the time? Yeah. For me, that's a pretty. It's actually not that hard of an answer. I've done boxing and striking, and the thing that is different is in boxing and striking. Even though you're talking about micro wins. Yeah. Most of the nights of training boxing or, or kickboxing, the micro wins are against pads and a bag, yeah. right? Because you're not sparring every night. Yeah. And if you are sparring every yeah. night, you're, you're, you're making a mistake. Up. Yeah, and yeah. you're not even going as hard as yeah, and you're not going comparatively. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can have fun, and we, we do that too. Like we, we call it playing tag, where you're like, you're like touching the person. You're, yeah. you're, it's almost like a slap fight, you know? Yeah. But you can't do that every, you can't spar every night. Yeah. And you shouldn't spar every night. And if you are sparring every night, you're wrong. Job, but you can yeah. roll every night. Yeah. You can get you can get full victories, not micro victories, full, full on, submissions. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, yeah, and I agree. And I think that if you, then it it really depends on who you are. But to me, that was the 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 big time appeal, and still is the the legitimate appeal of jujitsu where you know how like people even now they'll be like hey but this martial arts is superior because this and that but really jujitsu is kind of being tested the best because yeah, it's yeah, going it's against you know full day. speed full speed enemy, enemy quote-unquote enemy you who's know trying to fight jiu-jitsu. back it's funny when people are like how would you ever get someone's arm there <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah they're like oh yeah, yeah. you get to get eat that arm lock try that on me it's like oh okay cool yeah what was i just reading about didn't um Gordon Ryan just beat somebody. He like called it. Yeah, um, he Met- called it. Metamorph Seven. Yeah, he yeah. was like, "I'm gonna beat you with this," and he did it within this amount of time. Did oh, it. That's by legit. the way. Yeah, Good and that's job, how Gordon it is, Ryan. man. And that's against a high level guy. Well, Gordon Ryan's obviously one of the best guys right now. Um, but that that is kind of how jujitsu is, you know. Unless it's like some that's huge beast, giant though. like football player just spazzing and running away the whole time. If you're if someone's engaging you, that's kind of how it is. Where you're like, oh, I can choke if they don't know jujitsu and you know oh, jujitsu. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If they like, don't yeah. know, oh yeah, for sure. If they're like, but how are you gonna get my arm there? Gordon Ryan did not do that to someone that didn't know jujitsu. Oh, I know, holy. And cow. that's the funny because that's those are the, those are the Hickson stories. You know, like Hickson yeah. would be like, I'm gonna every all of you 14 black belts i'm gonna arm lock your left arm all of you and he'd do it yeah. all of them black belts yeah damn that's that's, that's a big you heard deal. those stories right yeah i rolled with hickson i've talked about that before yeah hickson's really good at jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah but yes, but I don't know though. So what do you do though? Like what? What's you the what's the advice? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Back to the my question. advice is like I said. That's why I think my new rule is train until you submit someone that is legitimately comparable to you. Yeah. And then if you don't like it still, then don't train. Like there was one guy on social media that like kept coming back to me like, oh, no, I hate jujitsu. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. And I was like, after a while, I'm like, okay, can you defend yourself against you know a takedown? Can you get up from the bottom? Okay, then go find something else to do and quit complaining to me about it. <laughs> like everyone is not meant for jujitsu. I get it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I almost, but it's still it, it is beneficial it though. Feels like it is for everyone. It's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. That's why I'm saying that's what it feels like to you and me. Yeah. 
and to the people that we hang out with. And that's why when I was saying like some people don't like jujitsu, it's really weird for me. Yeah. To understand that. I have a hard time with their perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. That's totally. me. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Understand their perspective. Yeah, when you tell me like, yeah. I don't really like jujitsu, it's like why? <laughs> why would you not like it? Straight up. Yeah. I'm glad you don't like it. Makes life easier for me. One person I don't have to worry about being able to choke me. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> okay. I would say this. Uh-oh. Try this. If you're in this situation, this is what I would do. Try to forget about, bo- like when you're like, okay, I'm going to go jujitsu tonight. Forget about boxing as a concept. Forget about kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. Like don't, don't think about that. Like your whole thing right now is like, is just jujitsu and learn or think of it as like just this complete learning experience, of course, but forget about the boxing because anytime like that's how, that's what's going to happen when you keep that boxing on your mind or the kickboxing on your mind, you're like, For why am I doing this when I could be doing boxing, which is like badass anyway, you know, kind of yeah. thing. But just forget about it. Yeah. I think that's the thing. You know how like guys in the UFC, that'll that'll happen sometimes where they're super good at jujitsu. Yeah. And then they'll train boxing and like phone it in. And it's vice versa too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was just saying like some people, and, and this is true with fighters. Some fighters don't like striking. They don't like to get hit specifically. No one minds punching people. Yeah. Some people like it. Some people like, they, they truly like to punch someone else in the head. Yeah. Some people are good with it. Most people are good with it because it feels good. Some people don't like to get hit. They really don't like that. Some people don't like to get smashed on the ground. They yeah. get claustrophobic, right? Yeah. They don't like that. And so different people have little different, I don't know if call them weaknesses, but preferences. Yeah. And you can see that very clearly, especially in the earlier UFCs. Nowadays, you're not getting the UFC if you're super uncomfortable and in any arena of martial arts, yeah. if you're just if you're just super uncomfortable, stand up. You you, you 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 know maybe you might make an undercard barely, but you don't see that on yeah, TV. Yeah, you don't go as far for sure. There you go. I like that rule. Do yeah, it until do you tap someone out. Yep, someone like legit. Compar- yeah, yeah, comparable to you. Just kidding. Because because what I think happens once you do that, you're like, I want to do that again. It. Yeah, yeah. It's and true. you got the benefit of getting tapped out, which is a bad, which to me motivates me more than just tapping someone out. Yeah. Like, how did someone control me? Think about that. Another human being can control me completely. Yeah. D- D- Dean does that to me sometimes. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I've been training for a really long time. Mm. And I'm a grown man yeah. in good physical condition, relatively <laughs> strong. Yeah. And he can hold me in a position yeah. where I cannot do anything and I can actually do that to him too not as clearly not as often yeah but like we he's got he's got three positions he can do it to me and I think he can cross side mount and on all fours right oh right, right. if I'm in one of those positions or he's in one of those positions on me he, I'm doomed Bad deal. for me it's only I don't have mount on him his mount escape is awesome and my mounts not really good so he's he can get out of that, so it's no big deal. But cross-eyed or when he's on all fours, I'm going to torture him. Yeah. And we both know we're going to get tortured in those positions. Yeah. For him, it's two posi- for him. there's two positions he's going to get tortured in. For me, there's three positions I'm going to get tortured in. Tortured. Yeah. Tortured. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. I would agree. You've seen that. it. Yeah. Yeah, felt it's tortured. It, yeah, it. you felt it too. Yeah, both, all both examples. All examples. <laughs> Except the mount, though. I can escape mount You have good better. mount. Yeah. No, mount escape. Yeah, you have good I mount can, escape. So Sorry, not yeah. as, but yeah, no, that's bad. I dig it. That isn't that weird though? You have you know twenty five over twenty five years experience, train very yeah. strong and big by the way. Yeah. Like compared to like a normal jujitsu guy, like yeah. you're a big, you're a thing, a huge play jujitsu player, mm-hmm. big strong experience, know what to do, know what not to do. All that doesn't mean anything just for that moment. Yeah. Doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. That's bad. That's a scary thing. Yeah. Next question. Good evening. I'm a firefighter, paramedic, and I'm still the rookie at my station. The fire service is notorious for politics within the ranks and rookies often get the worst of it. My question is, how can I implement extreme ownership in a situation where the blame falls to me anyway? How can I have my superiors view this as a positive trait when every rookie gets the short end of the stick and when none of my superiors are willing to engage in extreme ownership? I'm taking ownership. However, the typical response along is along the lines of that's correct. It is your fault. Dang. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> That's correct. It is your fault. 
That's what extreme ownership is. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what extreme ownership it is. You're saying it's your fault. You're not just saying it so they leave you alone. You're saying it because you're taking ownership of it. Then you can fix what is wrong. That's what it is. So, and I will tell you, the boss will notice. He will. He'll notice. And the people above you in the chain of command will notice. They will notice that you are taking ownership. They'll notice that you're solving problems. They'll notice that that will then give you a good reputation. But taking extreme ownership does not absolve you of the blame. That's it's the opposite of that. You are at fault. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. And this is one of those classic questions I get asked all the time. It's like, what if they say it? Is, what if they say that's right? It is your fault. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's true in business. It's and it's true in life too. If you're blaming other people for things that are going wrong, you're not going to fix them. You can't fix them because in your mind, you don't control them. They're not your fault. So. If you want to take extreme ownership at work and in business and in life, stop blaming other people and blame yourself and realize that it actually is your fault. That's correct. Own it and do something about it. Boom. Do do you think that sometimes um, like this, you know how some people will, at like at the muster, some people say to ask you this, and yep. they'll say it'll be similar to similar, this, yep. where where they'll be like, like I'm trying to take extreme ownership, but you know something like this yeah. happens, and then you say, well, yeah, like you take extreme ownership, you actually take the blame, and then you talk about how you're going to fix the problem, right? Like yep. that's how you do it. You don't just take, you don't say, yes, yeah, my fault, and then boom, we're good, yeah, we're, we're good. done, my yeah. bust kind of thing. It's or, fu- that's ego. It's funny yeah. because it, your ego is like if I say like echo. This went wrong and it's my fault. And then you go, yeah, yeah, you should have done a better job. I get that's the, I talk about you this all the like time. That. That's my defense. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Well, you know, I, you know, I would have been able to do it better if you would have done blah 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 yes. blah. So okay. even though I'm saying I'm taking ownership, I'm not actually taking ownership. Yeah. So that was actually going to be the, my God, question. Just stop so making totally excuses, answered. people. So it's almost like, maybe not all the time, but it's almost like. Like, let's say I did something and I messed up. I caught my own mistake right in the middle of doing it. I was like, man, I'm so dumb. And it was a dumb mistake. Oh, I'm so dumb. And you said, yeah, you are dumb. And I'd be like, wait, don't call me dumb. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's kind of like that, right? It's like, man, you just said you're dumb kind of thing. You know what else is funny is, too, is you hear people make excuses. Like, uh, but instead of taking the blame, instead of taking owning the excuse, they, they so like, let's say uh, I wasn't prepared for a podcast. Mm-hmm. Or let's say no. I said, "Hey, we're gonna we we can try and record on Wednesday, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it because I have this going on, and my dog did this, and my kid did that, and I'm I'm making excuses right, right. instead of saying like, hey, I didn't plan well enough, and I didn't anticipate some things that I should have anticipated, and now I'm not gonna be ready. Right? Yeah. It's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you get in, what this is what happens, and this is the difference, man." If you have the habit of actually saying like, hey, I didn't anticipate this and it's actually my fault, then you know what you do? You plan better. Yeah. How many times have I called you up and said, hey, Echo, I'm not ready to record the podcast? Yeah, a few times. No. Actually, no. You said I might not be ready. And then? <laughs> then you right? probably yeah. got mad at yourself. Yeah, got mad got at myself. Ready. And I, But I, I was actually giving you a, a warning of like, hey, I'm going to be, it's going to be tight. Mm-hmm. But... I knew I was going to have to work to try and get it done. What I'm saying is when you truly say like everything that's happening in my world is my fault, yeah. you don't make excuses anymore up front. You, yeah. you, and even if you do, you say like, hey, here's what's going on and this is what I'm going to do to get over them. Yeah, It's a big difference, man. It has a huge impact. Yeah. When you're saying, here's a good one. Like, and this is a, one of the, probably the most common thing of anything in, of any excuse is I don't have time. Mm. That's the most. Com- is there any more common excuse that I don't have time besides the dog ate my homework? Right. <laughs> I, I don't. Not that I know of. No. By the way, one time the dog literally <laughs> ate my kid's homework. It was all chewed up. Yeah, I was man. like, well, hey. the dog ate your homework. Hey, that came um, from somewhere. Keep your do- keep your in a dog secure area. Yeah. So there's no there's no bigger excuse that gets used more common, at least for like a long term goal, like a like hey I I wanna you name it. 
Yeah. I want to play you piano. Know, I want to play piano. I want to play guitar. I want to write a book. I want to study. I want to get my degree. All this stuff, right? Anything yeah. is just I don't have time. I want to get in shape, right? Yeah, I want to yeah, run every day. Time. It's it's all. Hey, even even I want to spend more time with my kids, but I don't have time. Yeah. Right? So that's the that's the pre given excuse. But when you blame all these other things, the time it's not your fault that you don't have time. Right. It's the fault of the schedule. It's yeah. the fault of the weather. The it's the fault of, of it's the lack of time. Yeah. The fact of the matter is if you take ownership of that, mm-hmm. if you take ownership of the time, you will have time because you'll make time. Yeah. And when I call you up and say, hey, I might not be able to get ready, what I'm doing is like saying, okay, I'm giving him a warning and then I'm looking at my schedule going, where can I finish prep or where can I prepare for this? Yeah. When can I get this done? That's the ultimate excuse for so many people. I don't have time. And the minute you say that you don't have control over the time, you do have control over the time. Yeah. Guess what? Uh, hey, are there people that are working three jobs? Yes, there are. Yeah. And might they have, a, are there things that they're gonna have to edit out of their schedule? Yes, there are. One of the first things you should edit out of your schedule, YouTube. <laughs> Social media surfing, YouTube, internet yeah. surfing, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. What else do we do to waste time? You know what I mean? Like yeah, we waste TV. time doing things. TV. So that way, if you if you have an excuse, turn it back on yourself and take control of it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. We got you. Make the time. You yeah. make the time. Yeah, a little time saving element. I don't even know if it's a tip. It's just a little. Thing to consider when you cruise cruise extra hard so you can get it done in half the time <laughs> <laughs> I'm disciplined with my time so I can cruise. Yeah Sometimes Discipline time, equals cruising. Yes, that's the freedom part mm-hmm. cruising. The time is like a it can be kind of like a balloon, you know with like little leaks in it yeah. where you know you want to like time will just kind of leak away, right? So if you're not, you know, how like For in sure. fact, you're. I think you were the one who kind of told me where it's like you should you should like plan kind of everything. You got to go just plan it all and get it done, and then the rest of that time is all is yeah. your time open free. Yeah. So if you're like, okay, I have some stuff to do today, but I'm not going to plan it necessarily. I'm just going to sort of get it mm. done tomorrow at some point. You could get one thing done. You could just be, you know, messing around or whatever. And then you get another thing done and you're kind of like, dang, that took me kind of all day a lot of times. So, you know, especially if you have like three, four things, but all those like little in between times, yeah. if you can add them all up, but sure. Okay. A workout takes, let's say you really want to go hard and say, I want to work out for an hour and a half every day, but I don't really have a free hour and a half in a row. Right. Because I got to go pick up my kids and I got to go do this. I got to drop them off. I got to do all this stuff. But if, most of the time, if you're like, okay, I'm going to schedule all these things and I'm going to boom, boom, and get them all done, then it's almost like you're shifting your time so it doesn't just leak through yeah. the, the little things that you have to do when you allow it to. I think it was you that originally talked about this, how much work people get done before like vacation. Like they know they're going on vacation, so they oh, work, yeah, 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 so they get everything done. Do that every day. Yes. You'll have yeah. more free time. Yeah. Just even like when you're leaving, hey, this is what I found myself, I did this the other day. I went, I actually went to 24 hour fitness, got a mm-hmm. good workout by the way. So I went 24 hours, got my workout or whatever, came out, came in my truck. I was checking, checking the crypto stuff. But so I got <laughs> in my truck, checked it and I was checking it. And then I like checked some other alerts, you know, you check it and boom, boom. And then I, and then I left. So I remember when I put my phone down and I started it up and I left, I kind of looked over and then you could see the window of 24 hour fitness and you know, the people that work at the front desk are there. So I, for whatever reason, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if they were watching me like, oh, another person addicted to his phone in there. Mm-hmm. Kind of just had that thought, you know, that I thought about, I was like, wait, there, that was like a good, maybe 10 minutes Oh yeah, that I for just sure. like let leak away yeah. right there. Hey, if, if that was part of my schedule, if I needed to check these things for sure, I could have like, if that was on some sort of a schedule or if I, ch- if I chose to do that at a specific time, I would have got that 10 minutes back somehow. Like that 10 minutes yep. wouldn't have leaked away. No. Nope. I actually, by the time I left the gym, at that particular time, if I didn't let that 10 minutes, I would have been home already mm-hmm. doing other stuff Do, that I should have scheduled. Videos. Yeah, work, doing, yeah, exactly right. And we do that all day, that yeah. kind of stuff. Don't let your time leak. 
But the, another thing where another time or, or another situation where this works, what you're saying about this um, taking ownership and for real take ownership. Yeah. Don't be like, hey, uh, you know, you know, uh, it's my fault. Then mm-hmm. they say it's your fault and be like, oh, why does everyone say it's my fault kind of thing? I'm not saying he said that, but I'm saying that kind of, is apologizing when you apologize to someone. You know, how like someone's like, hey, hey, look, look, me and you had a disagreement. It escalated, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then the next day I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, but but you did kind of say yeah, something. You know, but I but I am sorry. You know, kind of thing. You know, yeah. Right. So but, you're putting a bot on there. Yeah. And your point is like it's not real. It's not a true apology. It's not effective at all. Like you, yeah, yeah. or if you explain like, but I was just feeling this, or you know, it's just you know, anytime there's not a like a full on hundred percent full speed apology towards someone. Like, don't mention the reasons why you felt that way. Don't mention any kind of justification on why you went there with your mind or whatever. It's all just like, this is what I did. This is all like terrible and whatever. And I'm straight up sorry. That's effective. Yeah. Speaking of apologies, next question. I'm sorry for taking so long with that. And, you know, but you were really egging me on. I'm just saying. Next question. Jocko, the military taught me to never apologize. Speaking of which. Because it's a sign of weakness. Had a conversation with a coworker who says that extreme ownership is the same as apologizing. Dang. So, uh, first of all, no. <laughs> apologizing is actually not a sign of weakness. And whoever was putting that out, whoever taught that, was actually too insecure about themselves and their leadership capability to admit when they were wrong or made a mistake. And, and really insecure about a, a lot of other things, most likely. People, it's actually the opposite. People that can't admit their mistakes are weak. Mm-hmm. And people that can't apologize when they screw up are weak. They're scared. Mm. They're scared to take ownership and they're protective of their ego. Now, that being said, extreme ownership is not the same as apologizing, but they're definitely similar you know, extreme ownership means you're admitting that there's some kind of a problem and you're taking ownership of that problem. If, if it's something that you did wrong, then you're, you're taking ownership of that mistake. The key part, as you already said, is not that you're just owning the problem. You're actually solving the problem. And yeah, if you screw something up or you make a mistake, then apologize for it. Apologize for your shortfalls. And then you can move forward. Uh, Sarah Armstrong. She's said a couple times on Twitter when I've said like, yeah, say you're sorry. She said, ask for forgiveness too. I haven't, I haven't tried that one out, but she seems to see, seems to think that that is another. And when she says things, I listen to her. She's yeah, she's a smart. I woman. think we talked about that. I think it might have been Sarah Armstrong. Oh wait, she said that a long time ago, right? Oh, long, long. Okay, time yeah, ago, yeah. You see, we talked about this yeah. before, and here's my take on that one. I'll say it again. I'm not a hundred percent on that one. Well, like can, ask for forgiveness this is why yeah, yeah okay. i will because it's this if someone i dig it as far as like doing it it feels like it does feel like a like a humble kind of approach but it can be taken like this so i would take it and i don't think i'd be wrong most of the time where when it's like okay i'm i'm sorry you know i'm i'm i messed up it's all me whatever right so it's almost like he th- you throw the ball in their court to be the bad guy it's kind of like so it's a, it's almost like a guaranteed way to get forgiven. That's what it is. And it's kind of like I know that. So it's like this is me strong arming forgiveness from you. It's like shaming you into forgiveness. Oh, so you're saying if you're like if I say, "Hey Echo, I'm really sorry about this. Do you forgive me?" Yeah. Oh. I got to say yes. If I say well, no, I'm, I'm the I'm, I'm the bad I'm guy. Imposing on you. Imposing, okay. strong arming them. That's yeah. interesting. This, it's, we'll have to get some feedback. I'm sure Sarah will give you some feedback on yeah, that. Yeah, it's subtle, but um, and I'm saying that really, the, it's more prevalent. I don't my, think I've ever asked for a person's forgiveness. I've said th- I've said so, you know sorry and apologized for all kinds of stupid things that I've done, but mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever asked for forgiveness. Yeah. Maybe if this was something really big. Yeah, or, but even then, man. Yeah, that's a tough one. I am sure she has a little great reason behind it. We'll have to get yeah. further uh, explanations. Yeah, I from Sarah. I Armstrong. thought of that because I considered like saying that in some minor mm-hmm. situation, or whatever. And then I'm like, wait, in minor situations, it's too much. Yeah, like you know, hey, Echo, I showed up late, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Will you forgive me? Like, no. Yeah. Like it's, that's it's, that's a little too much. It's like saying. Hey, I know I, you know, I know I made you mad or something like that. I know I made you mad and I'm sorry, you know, whatever. Are you still mad? 
it's kind of like that because mm. if you say yeah i'm still mad it's kind of like all right hey i said my piece you chose not to be mad or you chose to continue to be mad mm-hmm. that's your th- problem kind of thing it's like do you f- please forgive me please forgive me like what kind of a dick doesn't forgive <laughs> someone you know it's kind of like that yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're bringing that so it's like a little stronger like i said we'll get feedback it's, it's an interesting we'll get feedback from sarah i'm sure it's interesting to think that there's people out there and you know they're out there they're like hey don't apologize it's a sign of weakness yeah yeah it's just, I, I just being dumb yeah I don't agree be dumb with you with that. yeah here's here's the advice for today don't be dumb yeah it kind of goes it, the, the the apologizing and taking extreme ownership how you say not similar i think there's a big overlap there Oh, there's a huge. A, overlap. Th- I didn't say they were not similar. Oh no, no, not the not the same thing. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, they're not they're not the same thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, there's a huge overlap. amount of overlap. Yeah, yeah, it's like um. Well, back to the thing when you're like, yeah, if if you don't apologize, that's weak or whatever. That's kind of like the guy who says like, hey, this is how I am. Take it or leave it, kind of thing. Yeah. Like if they're I know you like, don't like those cool. people. Yeah, I mean, if they're a dick, you know, or something like that, and they're like, take it or leave it. Some people love me, some people hate me. It's kind of thing. And, bro, that doesn't bother you that people hate you because of how you are, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> that's it's an indicator. Like, yeah, you know. So it's kind of weird. I mean, yeah, I dig it. You know, be you for sure. But um, I think that's something. It's not nothing if people hate you. Let's do one more question. As a person in a leadership position, what should I do if I consistently notice one of my guys motivating the team and leading them successfully during projects and missions better than I can? The completion of the mission being the top priority, would it be better for me to back down and let my counterpart lead which will benefit the company and its employees. And how will I regain my status among them? I think this one's actually pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. If you've got someone that's doing a better job leading, then let them lead. Mm -hmm. Let them lead. Give them some room. Learn from them. Support them the best you can. And the best way you can most likely support them is by getting out of the way and letting them do what they're doing and then get them the support that they need. And what this is going to give you the benefit of is now you can instead of looking down and in and managing your team you can look up and out and forward and see what is going on in the future and prep the battlefield in in the future or prep the next market area or look for recruit you know you can move you can lead you can actually lead Mm. and let that you know young buck handle the things that are going on tactically on the battlefield right now i used to say this to the to the SEAL leadership, I used to say, hey, the enlisted SEAL leaders handle the problem that is in their face right now, the tactical problem that's in their face right now. The officer should be looking at what we're gonna do next. Mm. That's kind of a e- really simple, it's not always like that, but that's a real good starting point. And so in this position, I'd be like, oh, I got a young buck that's coming up and leading well, cool. That's gonna allow me, allow me mm. to look up and out and be ready to move forward. And plan the next move now as far as regaining your status as a leader you won't really need to because if you do this properly you'll be seen as a leader who is confident enough to let a subordinate leader step up and lead while I go and move forward the you'd have to regain if you were there shutting this person down and trying to micromanage and doing a worse job than everyone on the team knows that that guy could do a good job Mm -hmm. let him do it yeah, that's true, huh? That's about confidence, really. Mm-hmm. It's about like, do you have, are you confident and are you secure in your leadership? Oh, ability? yeah, to step aside. To step aside and let someone do it. Yes, yeah, no problem. Yeah. We love it. Hey, you, you're really good at this. Cool. You, you step in there and do it. I got no problem with that. Will you get the occasional yeah. person that's like, oh, look, Jocko's, Jocko's letting that guy do it because he doesn't know what he's doing? Occasionally, yeah. yeah. One out of 20 people will be that big Mr. Negative. That's fine. Yeah. You know, then then what's cool is when you're on the outside, guess what you are. When you're when you let someone else run the team, guess what you have. Guess what you have. Detachment. Yes. Oh, yeah. Echo Charles. I've been learning. Yes, you, you know. have detachment, and yeah. so now you're going to be able to see things that even that leader that's better than you can't see. And then when you come in, you're going to look like the tactical genius because you point <laughs> something out, but they didn't notice because they were in the firefight. Tactical genius. Yeah. That's the way it works. Things good. Yeah, that's hard to do that. Man, when someone's doing better than you, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. That's right. I mean, why you say it, take, what, it takes confidence is what you say? This is that's such a good example of K- 
keeping your ego in check because yeah. what you just said the everyone test. feels that and when you feel yeah. that that's when you go oh cool I'm, my ego's getting out of control it's fine yeah. just put it in check and let this person lead and I'll move you know check out what we're going to do next I'll yeah. look ahead on the battlefield Shoot, I want, I'm trying to think like how, how you said there occasionally there will be a guy who'll be like oh he doesn't know what he's doing so he's letting do. I, I, I've been in that situation where my boss actually I've been the guy who my supervisor like said oh yeah you like you handle you take this you know you got this one kind of thing and i'm like mm -hmm. yeah you're doing it because you don't know what you're doing kind of thing and everyone knew that mm -hmm. and so i've been in that situ situation where i'm looking at him but the now, now think about this think about if instead of him just saying hey you go on and run this thing think if he would have said hey echo you're really good at this you're better than i am yeah you step up run this yeah. i'm gonna be over here looking where we're going next what would you think then yeah so he's yeah. actually said that before like a couple times and it, it every single time it made me feel way better like there about the whole thing. um even though i mean of course the, the truth will set you free yeah so i feel like if i was one of the you know one of the team guys on the teams thinking that I think I wouldn't think that if yeah if he did that kind yep. of stuff yeah, totally. or if or if as long as he didn't act like I'm this so is the counterintuitive still, part of leadership. You know? This is yeah, the counter. This totally is the thing that's counterintuitive. Yeah. You think that if you hide it, yeah, 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 yeah. it's better. Mm -hmm. And the better thing to do is be like, "Hey, Echo's really good at this. He's better than I am, yeah. and he's going to step up and run this thing." And mm -hmm. people are like, "Oh, wow, Jock was super confident in his leadership." They don't, they don't verbalize in their head that, right. but they. That's but just the feeling. That's the feeling that yeah, they get. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, Jock, was, Jock doesn't care who's running this thing. He's just, yeah, we're good. It's good, man. Yeah. Get so watch out for that." Get just keep your ego in check. Yes, sir. At all times. All right. Let's have a podcast that's less than 19 hours long. So how can you maybe give us a hand with helping be prepared and getting better in our lives? Sure. Echo Charles, go. Be happy to. No problem. Okay. So we're working out. We're all working out. Yes, 100%. Right, every day. Are we working out every day? So yeah. you don't have to, not necessarily have to, but a lot. We'll say. I we, recommend it. Yeah, we're not working out and then cruising for months. So we're all working out. Look, we're going to supplement our stuff. Jocko does have supplements now. That was kind of the plan. The plan has come to fruition. That's the word, right? Fruition. It is. Yeah. So and you used it correctly. Yeah. See. All right. There you go. <laughs> so krill oil, right? That's the the main one for our joints. Actually, it's good for your eyes and brain too. Yep. By the way. Mm -hmm. So worry. I'm not saying don't worry about your eyesight anymore after you take this. I'm saying you can worry less. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's good. Check. So yeah, Jocko Super Krill is what it's called, and Joint Warfare. That one's obviously for the joints specifically. But I'm sure there's all kinds of other benefits. I've noticed my. I have an injured arm. Sure. It's healing up quickly, yeah. Like no, like noticeably each day, and I have to attribute because I've had this similar injuries before, right? It's an arm yeah. lock, right? Yeah. And as bad as this one was, yeah, little noises, uh, it it is noticeably. I'm attributing that to joint warfare. Yeah, and Dean told the other day. I Dean told me exactly like like his version yeah. of what happened and i know that i know that move that yeah. he shows and yeah. like, even when he shows it on me yeah dean's one of these guys where i think sometimes he doesn't know his own no. strength and what he's doing is super effective by the way it's <laughs> like it's a kimura that's what he's doing it's like th the the what he did to me was a straight arm lock yeah so that's what it ends and, up being and just so everyone knows i'll just make this real clear this was a this was an accident dean was actually showing a move he wasn't even we weren't rolling it wasn't live he was showing a move and he's shown 10,000 moves with me as the dummy and I've shown many many moves on Dean with Dean as the dummy and he got this position I had just arrived <laughs> Which makes and, it and, worse. And, and I don't know if that makes it worse or not but I was definitely I was cold you know so I was cold and no warm-up and he was showing a move so he's just like, oh yeah I want to show this thing I think he was like, you know, Jocko's got a good defense here, so you got to be ready if the guy does this. And then he's like, as he was saying that, I think he thought I was going to attempt this movement, and mm -hmm. I didn't. And he just, he just, and he made yeah. it in the arm. So is that pretty much how he debriefed it to you? Uh, yeah, but yeah. He, he, the thing, the reason he feels I all understood bad, it more. Because Dean's like a nice guy, you know, he feels yeah. all bad. And, 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 you know, I mean, it's it's a bummer. Yeah. 
That's but just, it's, it's not like he. I know. Meant, I know for yeah. a fact he didn't mean to do it. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, it's one of. The, it's basically how he explained it, and he's done this move. Like I said, as me as the dummy, and it hurts. <laughs> by the way, you know he's what's like, funny? He goes. He goes. I didn't realize you weren't that flexible. I go, bro. It's my elbow. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a, well, there's supposed- no flexibility in an yeah. elbow. Well, it must have been a miscommunication, just like I said, because this is what it was. It's like, okay, when you're going for the Kimura from across site and uh-huh. the guy straightens his arm, yep. you want to get his arm behind his back, bend his arm, basically, and behind his back. That's what he said, and that's the move he has shown to me before, and it's one of his things, his tricks. <sighs> and he, he said that, like, when he did it, it was I don't know, instant. it was just like a miscommunication. Yep. You know, like, if you and if you do it, it's kind of like you're just, it's just leverage to bend your arm behind your back, but... Dang, and it was it wasn't your shoulder that jammed. No, no, it was no, your elbow. And I'm thankful about that yeah. because shoulder injuries are worse than elbow. Elbows is like they heal, you know. Yeah. And even this one, I can do like, I'm, I'm, it'll be fine. Yeah, no factor. Yeah, you got the Get joint some. warfare. Yeah, yeah. Boom. I attribute the quick healing. Yeah. To joint warfare, krill oil, which I always take, but yeah. joint warfare. Yeah, and that's and these are one of those ones that is kind of like man. I wish I would have, it would have saved me a lot of pain in the past, I know. you know, like if your joints are just holding up, yeah, it's more no, of a big deal. It, than, it's good. And it's like I said, I mean, I had my shoulder where I couldn't do muscle ups for like six months. And then r- when we came out with the first like experimental, no, like the second experimental uh, joint warfare and I was on it, I was like, all of a sudden I was doing muscle ups again, Yeah, which is, that's awesome. Right, that's awesome. Oh shoot, yeah, doing muscle ups. Period is awesome because I haven't. Dang, muscle ups. I haven't done muscle ups for decades. Really? My whole life. I don't think <laughs> I've ever done a muscle up before. In four decades. I think I've tried to do a muscle up probably like three times. We'll in my go whole life. as soon as we get done. We'll go do some muscle ups. Yeah, teach me the yeah. technique. It's just technique. Well, there's technique. There's a little bit of strength, obviously. Yeah. But if you know the false grip, which is this main the main technique that needs to be learned, keep it in tight to your chest, pull it to your sternum, boom. Boom. Yeah. Throw throw your chest forward and you're there. All right. Cool. Just New skill. Yeah. Boom. We'll muscle up. But yeah, if you want this uh, joint warfare and Jocko Super Krill, it is at originmain.com. Main like the state. Originmain.com. Also at Origin Main is where you can get your geese. Oh, but before the geese, I know. I, this is new, so I can't tell. This new supplement called The Discipline. Mm-hmm. Pre mission, pre workout, pre life. Activity pre life supplement. Um, that's a good one. There's cognitive enhancements in there as well as physical. Pre mission. Yeah. You're gonna need your brain and your body. Yeah. Boom. For the mission. Boom. That's the one to take. Yeah, get that one. That one's good, by the way. Tastes good too. Surprisingly. Uh, I know. Jocko actually made it taste good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, because good. the big thing you gotta watch out for is you know, we don't wanna spike our insulin level with sugar. Yeah, sugar. But we have monk fruit. Which is the sweetener and and monk fruit it tastes good, delish, and and it also has sure, some delish. some positive impact on your physiology as well. So double two, do we say well, there? We say two birds, one stone. That's dang, what we say. Monk in the fruit. industry, right on. Yeah, dang. So give that to, one. Yeah, it win. does taste good. Yeah, it's good. Lemon Respect. lime flavor. Yeah, there you go. Get that one. But yeah, that one too. OriginMain.com. Real good. Also at Origin Maine, like I was going to say, is geese for all the people who have been asking Dave Burke today. Called me today mm. about geese. Like, what up with the geese? I'm getting my gee and all this stuff. He's been no, no Wait, gee. was he even questioning? He was actually asking more. Well, yeah, oh. he did. He was like, what gee should I get? But then I was like, well, no, okay. So you go <laughs> to Origin. Like, and, he, and he was like, no, no, I know that. But just which <laughs> oh, okay. one? And my the okay, sizes. Really cause it's not, the traditional gee size is just like A1, A2, yeah. A3. Boom. You get it. Boom. This one is kind of, it's more suited for you. Yeah. So he Dave's some uh, questions. A skinny. <laughs> oh, Dave. I got a picture. I got to post this picture. I got a picture of Dave Burke and me. The commander of, is, a, I'm the commander of TU Bruiser. He's the commander of Lightning Six, his uh, Anglico team. And I got a picture of us in Ramadi together on a rooftop. Mm. And we're both asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been, I, don't, I don't even know what it was taken, but it's yeah. pretty awesome. And it, it shows you like, like, and you know, what's, you know what's awesome? It's like we're both asleep. We both have all of our gear on sitting outside yeah. on a rooftop asleep. So what is that? Like you, you just kind of got to catch your foot, sleep we, when we, you we, can. Yeah, kind. Yeah, like, let we, me just catch this quick. Yeah, probably we, my guess is 
we had moved into a position we'd stayed there we'd good a clearance was going on the clearance was done and now we were kind of in a standby situation and yeah. we're just like now we get a chance to sleep because before we'd go in the field you'd be asleep you'd be awake for basically like 24 hours and yeah. then you go in the field matter of fact sometimes it's like when you got in the field is when you got your first sleep like after you get in the field and then you get your four hour whatever three hours someone you know you get your head down and you get some sleep finally yeah, yeah. and so there's I, me and dave burke racked out bro and it's not like you're like how you said three four hours i always especially after hearing you guys talk it's like man it's not like you're coming home from a hard day of work and you know now you're you've clocked out and now you have some time to Settle down, watch the news, and go sleep for the night. It's no, not like that, no, no, no. you know. Gonna catch some. Yeah, you're gonna catch it where you can. So dang, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So it's not that you guys are just falling asleep on the job. No, literally, no, 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 no. no just, not at all. You gotta no. catch some no, some no, shut no. eyes. Like, so you can what perform. that means is we were probably on the tail end of a operation that we had conducted, and we were now like in a stand down mode, and yeah, yeah. maybe we either we were probably getting ready to move to another. You know, another quadrant, another sector, and we were just catching some rack ops. Yeah, yeah. Some but R&D. it's an awesome, it's an awesome picture because it just tells you how like tired you. You know, yeah. we're both sitting in chairs, all of our gear on, holding our guns, and we're asleep. Both of us. It's awesome. Yeah, man. Bad. Nonetheless, Dave Burke. Yeah, he called me. Nonetheless, uh, that story doesn't matter. You want to get a gi? You still looking to get a gi? You want to get another gi? You get it from OriginMade.com. Made in America. Hundred percent made. Mm-hmm. Made in America. From the seeds of the cotton. I said it. <laughs> seeds of the cotton all the way up to the gi you're wearing. People like when you say cotton. Sure. And they like when you say important. Important. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. And mountain. Because you. <laughs> I forgot about mountain. Yeah, bro. Because you and I feel weird if I say mountain. Yeah. Mountain or important. It's like I'm not. Important. Like, important. Yeah. For me, that's just like a on the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I dig it. It doesn't sound yeah. weird when you do it. It, sounds, yeah. it feels weird when mm-hmm. I do it. Nonetheless, yeah. Or the, Go there. They have, they have a lot of cool stuff, and it's all made in America. That's the good part. It's all made in America. Also, for workout stuff, kettlebells, battle ropes, maces. You're switching up your workout. You're doing creative stuff. Boom. On it. On it. com slash Jocko. That's where you go. The kettlebells, the artistic one, primal bells, demon bells, not demon bells, zombie bells is what they're called. Um, and primal bells. Wait, primal bells? Zombie. Legend. Legend. Yeah, plenty to pick from. Those are the cool ones. I bought my daughter one a few months ago, by the way. She gets after it. Nonetheless, that's where you get them. A lot of cool stuff on there. A lot of good info as well. On it.com slash Jocko. That's the one. Also, when you're buying the books that we occasionally, and occasionally meaning very often, <laughs> review on this podcast, go to jockopodcast.com. The, the page a little top menu there. Click on books from the podcast. Click through that. It's a good way to support. That's where you buy them. We have them organized for you. So, you know, you don't get lost or whatever. Listed by episode. Click through there. Get them. Amazon. Amazon Prime. Next day delivery. Best way to do it, in my opinion. Also, subscribe to the podcast if you have not already on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Spotify. Wait, can you subscribe on Spot? I think you can. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not on Spotify. But if you are on Spotify and you can subscribe, subscribe. Also on YouTube, video version of this podcast. Also excerpts from this podcast. Mm. The benefits of of excerpts, I think, are kind of self-explanatory. And I've explained them plenty of times, so I'm not going to do it this time. Um, but yeah, you can take your the little uh, lessons individually, so you don't have to listen to the whole podcast. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> subscribe. Good way to support. Also, Jocko has a store. It's called Jocko Store. JockoStore.com. This is where you can get the shirts. Discipline equals freedom. A shirt with Jocko's head on it, with the word "good" written backwards. I'm not even say why it's written backwards, but it is written backwards on purpose. Because people have been emailing you. To, and, emailing and by the way, me. if you see a shirt with the good written forward, it's a fake shirt. It's a knockoff. It's what's called a counterfeit knockoff. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Actually, uh, um, somebody posted a picture of, I think, I forget what it's. It's a Jocko some. It's one of those, you know, those 
Okay, there, so there's like companies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That they go, you know, they form stores oh, on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And they just see a little something. Yeah, that like might some be popular, popular trendy boom. thing. And yeah. they'll, they they print shirts. They're like low quality shirts. I saw one that said, you wouldn't understand it. It's, it's a Jocko, a Jocko thing. thing. That's the one I saw. Yeah. And they were like, hey, you know, I could. And here's the thing. Cool. Hey, man. Right yeah, on. good. You're I supporting mean, some random dude out there. Yeah. And I. I the, to me, the quote was like, I, I, I would never put that quote on there. I, I don't think you would. It doesn't no. seem like something you would put. It's a job. <laughs> you would understand. <laughs> eh, you know, kind of no, whack. Uh, the, you know, the guy looked cool in it, yeah, and yeah, I dig yeah. it. But um, Good none, intention. Good intention, hey, for man. sure, 100%. And I'm signing on in that way. But I think, again, the, it's a situation where these companies, I'm assuming it's a company. I'm sure it's not just one dude, but it's companies, they get trendy stuff, and they just... Yeah, offer them for print and on Amazon or wherever. Yeah, and that's different. Yeah, that's what they call counterfeit knockoff. Jocko, you could stuff. go to Jocko store and then you're definitely supporting the podcast. Yeah, JockoStore.com. That's it. And there's some Origin stuff like back in Origin Maine, they got the your rash guard. Yep. You know, so Origin stuff, hundred percent in the game. You know, yeah, the podcast legit. Other than that, it's it's gonna be kind of hard to find. Well, no, the T Jocko White T. Jocko White T is supporting the podcast. Yeah. But anything else is going to be knockoffs and you know, kind of find that every once in a while. So yeah. just beware if you care. If you care. I dig it. Because to me, if if someone was wearing It's a Jocko thing, you wouldn't understand. They were like, hey, good evening or something like that. I'd be done. Yeah. That'd be my new yeah, friend. Well, we're to still me. in the game. Yeah. So I dig it 100% either way. But I think that's more just info, you know, yeah, yeah. to be For utilized. your information. Yes. So when I went back to Jocko's story, there's, there's women's stuff on there. Discipline equals freedom. T-shirts, hoodies, hats. I don't think I beanies. Finished. I didn't finish the beanies yet, <sighs> but a meeting on Monday. You know that it's over. winter's almost over. Yeah, right? you know it's one of those things. You know. Okay, just check. We're it. trying. We're over here making sure you are aware <laughs> of the seasons. They're the same every year. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like a spring beanie. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, some rash guards. Especially on there right now, since it's negative forty degrees in New England and Minnesota and in Oklahoma, Michigan. it's freezing Chicago. out there in Michigan. Yeah. You know, man. Sorry, guys. I don't, they're coming, though. It's all good. Um, also, rash guards. There's a new rash guard. The sodium one. Mm. The essence of jujitsu. Small action, big reaction. You know. Oh. And that got pointed out to me after I started wearing it, by the way. Oh, so someone applied a layer. A layer, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. applied a layer. Yeah, a black belt. It was Keeling Taylor who oh. did it. And he was like, oh, what does your rash guard say? He says, it's a small action, big reaction. And he goes, the essence of jujitsu. Oh, like, yeah, it is. You know, like you, the, the whole leverage and efficiency thing. I was like, dang, bro, you're, you're deep. J- Speaking of judo, Keeling, judo Keeling. Yeah, yeah, he's black belt he's judo Originally well. a judo player. Yeah. Legit. Nonetheless, new rash guard out. Um, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, the worry kid rash guards are out and in circulation oh, in yes. the wild, I've big seen time. Them in the wild. Not in the, I haven't seen the person in the wild, but I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, pictures. Virtually. Yes, virtually. Yeah. Cyber, cyber, in the cyber space. Wild. Yes. Pictures. The cyber wild. If you will. Yeah, that's cool when people do that. Send you the pictures. Legit. Nonetheless, yeah, jockostore.com. That's a good one. Also, psychological warfare. Of course, if you didn't know what that is, I'm going to tell you. It's an album with tracks. Jocko tracks. (laughs) And this is what it's for. If you didn't know, I'm going to explain it. This is what it's for. On your path to, I'm going to make it like concise. Okay, here's a good way to say it. On your path to greatness, it's a weapon against weakness. It's kind of concise. I'm still working on it. I just made it up just now. Concise yet cheesy somehow. Yeah. Like path to greatness, that's so <laughs> cheesy. Don't say that again, bro. All right, yeah, see, see, this is yeah. the, what do you call it, the creative um, process. process. Yeah, this is like. No, that was just cheesy. There was no yeah, process. Yeah, live there. on the podcast yeah. is the worst. Worst deal. All right. Well, hey, look, on your path. How about that? On the path. You're on the path. We're on the path. We're working out. We're working out. We're getting up early. Some of us, most of us, some of us getting up early. Um, sticking with the, the dietary guidelines that can keep us in the game. Hopefully. We better be. Nonetheless, every every once in a while, you'll hit that little roadblock. Little speed bump. Speed bump. Not roadblock. Speed bump. Moment of weakness. All it is is a distraction. Like, okay, when you get hungry, you're on a fast or you're on, you know, like a really solid diet and maybe it's new or something. You're thinking long term. 
hopefully you're thinking long term long term win my diet's going to bring me my workout my whole thing is going to bring me to this long term goal right you keep your eyes on that goal you're going to stay on the path you get distracted by the fact that you're hungry at one moment the fact that this thing right here donuts whatever tastes good you're distracted by that if you keep your eyes on the long term goal you won't be distracted that doesn't mean anything yeah i know i'm hungry right now i'm supposed to be hungry right now i didn't eat yet of course donuts taste good they always taste good has nothing to <laughs> has nothing to do with this path. That's why these are distractions. This psychological warfare is it's like a little helper to keep you from being distracted. And it's Jocko's telling us why we should not be distracted. All right, thank you. That was psychological warfare, which is available <laughs> on iTunes. <laughs> it is. That's exactly what it is. That's the best way to explain it. You just explained it thoroughly. I feel thoroughly. like you don't. Very you know. Job. You know why you don't understand the value because you don't listen to it. No. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, because you've never. Yeah, like the like you having to use it. I think is like the kind. Oh, you're just gonna think to yourself. Uh, that's kind of. It's just part no, of the game, you know. For us, you're it's right. like I have listened to it, but I don't like utilize it on the regular. Yeah, as you much as you try do. utilize something and get that little win with mm-hmm. it. You, bro, you're gonna be like, okay, this thing works. This thing is legit, just like jujitsu. It's an album on iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, that type of stuff. That's where you can get it. Speaking of Amazon, also on Amazon, you can get. Something called Jocko White Tea, which might sound like it's a simple drink. You sure. know, you put water, you put some tea in the water. What you don't know is that once you drink the tea, you now have a guaranteed deadlift of 8,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. So drink Jocko White Tea and deadlift more. <laughs> we got some books. Mm-hmm. Way of the Warrior Kid, Jiu Jitsu, studying, reading, working out. It's for kids but adults can get something out of it too. Somebody posted a straight up Rocky training montage, but it was like an eight year old kid getting after it. And it was all, he's like (laughs) sitting intensely reading Warrior Kid and then he's hitting mitts and he's intensely reading Warrior Kid and then he's doing pushups. So yeah, uh, you can get that book, Way the Warrior Kid. The next Warrior Kid book is coming out April 28th. I'll tell y'all when it comes out and is available for pre-order. What's the name? What's the name? Can you tell us? The yeah, name the name is no? the name is Way the Warrior Kid. Mark's mission. Mm. Yeah, Mark. Mark learned some new lessons. I'll read some excerpts from it on the podcast in the coming months. Just you know, some little tastes sure. good. of Mark's mission. Extreme ownership, of course. That is the book that I wrote with my brother Leif Babin. Combat Leadership for Business and Life. How to Take Ownership, which I talked a little bit about today. Discipline Equals Freedom, The Field Manual. How to Get After It. Mentally, physically, get some. If you want the audio version of that, it is not on Audible. It is on MP3, iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, and other MP3 platforms. Echelon Front is our leadership consulting company. I had a guy talking to a potential client company. Was like, hey, can you help us establish a culture of leadership inside of our company? I'm like, that is that's what we do. <laughs> so if you need help with leadership at your company, reach out to us. It's me. It's Leif Babin, JP Dinell, Dave Burke. Email is info at echelonfront.com. Or you can go to our website, echelonfront.com. If you want a, a keynote speech, you don't need to go to a speaker's bureau. You can just contact us at echelonfront.com. That's the more efficient, effective way to make it happen. On top of that, we have the muster. Dig it. We talked about it a little bit today. Sure. The, the muster is a leadership symposium where we talk about leadership, we train leadership pragmatically, tools, you will be, you will, this is pretty cool, you will be a better leader when you come out of the muster. You will be, Mm -hmm. 100%. I don't know if you'll be 100% better of a leader. You will have a 100% chance, or or 100% chance of becoming a better better leader. How much, I'm not 100% sure on that figure. (laughs) But you will definitely be a better leader. Yeah. And when we got done, I think I've talked about this before, but when we got done in Austin, 
and we were at Jiu Jitsu, mm. and we were teaching Jiu Jitsu, and I was like, this is such a good deal yeah. to, to get the information that comes at the muster, to have that opportunity to learn these lessons from the battlefield that you can then take and apply to your business and your life. And on top of that, like the icing on the cake is, is going to Jiu Jitsu and getting an introduction to that. So the muster, it's been awesome. It's been awesome to see how it's affected people yeah. Afterwards, that have changed their lives from coming to the muster. So it's awesome. Come and get some at the muster. It is this year. We're only doing two. One is going to be in Washington D.C. May seventeenth and eighteenth. Then there's going to be San Francisco, October seventeenth and eighteenth. We have had four of these events up until now. They all sold out. These will sell out. So if you want to go, a lot of times when people, when companies, companies have bureaucracies inside of them, and so they're trying to get the approval for the, you know, hey, we, we need eight tickets, and they're trying to run that through the chain of command to get the funding for the eight tickets and blah, 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 blah. And we've had companies that have started that process too late, and then we sell out. And we're sitting here saying, hey, sorry, the next muster's in six months, you can come then. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Get busy now. It takes a while to get through your bureaucratic system at your company to get your team sent to the muster. We'll see you there. Extremeownership.com is how you can register. And if you want to contact maybe me, maybe Echo, if you want to share something with us, you have some kind of question, you have some kind of an answer, you have some kind of a comment you want to make, we're actually available on the interwebs, on Twitter, on Instagram. And on that other one, it's called the Face of Bokibo Hot. Echo is at Echo Charles, and I am at Jocko Willink. And finally, thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for spreading the word. And for those of you that serve, thanks for your service. Those of you that protect, thanks for your protection. And for those that have fallen, those that we never got to say goodbye to, those that we never got to thank, to all of you, thank you and goodbye. And until next time, this is Echo and Jocko. Out.